I was born in South Africa, came to England in the early 70s. Um, I worked in the fashion industry for 30, 30 odd years. I started doing evening classes in ceramics towards the end of my fashion career. I was doing a short course at the City Lit and I used to take all the books out of the library at the City Lit and I saw this tiny little photograph of a very ancient pot that was Nerikomi and I just thought, oh, I must try that because I didn't really like glazing. I always was disappointed after I'd glazed something and um, I started trying and experimenting and just gradually fell more and more in love with it. I use a porcelain, I use a grogged porcelain because I smoke fire as well, so it needs to withstand the thermal shock, so I use a grogged porcelain. I colour the clay with oxides, generally with oxides, I sometimes use stains, but mostly oxides. Once I've coloured it, I'll alternate layers of different colours, sometimes two colours only, sometimes three or four colours. I'll layer them up, slice them in different ways, put them back together again. I use a paper clay slip of the same porcelain to join with because it makes it much stronger. I gradually build up the pattern as I go along and I always have bits left over of pattern and I'll make new patterns out of that and sometimes those are the most beautiful ones because an element of chance has come into it and it's, it's not as focused and planned. I rather like letting a little bit of chaos enter. <laughs> so I often use moulds because it just makes it a little bit easier to, to deal with the clay. But I do also make freeform pieces which start, maybe start off in a mould but then the sides just gradually develop as I, as I go along. But um, I've, I've got three favourite moulds that I use quite a lot and I'm starting to make smaller versions of them so that I'll have a range of different sizes in each, in each style. So I'll start off with, the, with one piece into the centre of the mould, sometimes going across at an angle, sometimes just a cube at the bottom. I'll sponge it in softly. I'll have mitered the corners before I put it in and then I'll plan what I'm going to add to it by cutting and placing them on and guessing where I need to cut it. Sometimes I misjudge it and I have to add another piece in to, or, or the clay isn't quite big enough. Or, so there's, there's a strong element of chance which I really like actually. I, I, don't, I try not to be too organised about it. I would much rather little bits creep in a little bit of imperfection in the, per in the perfection. So I'll gradually build up bit by bit. I always try and put a rim around the, the top edge because I think it makes a stronger, stronger statement and also it lessens the chances of cracking on the rim because I haven't got joins at the face of the rim. I then scrape it to lock them together, lock all the pieces together and then I'll wrap it up and leave it for a day or two until it's firmed up a bit more. Then I'll scrape it some more, I'll take it out of the mould, I'll scrape the other side and make sure there aren't any gaps or holes or, which I'll fill. And then um, it gets wrapped up again out of the mould and I'll go back to it after a few days, scrape it some more. And as it gets drier, the pattern starts to come through the scraping. Once it's been scraped clean and I'm happy with the thickness or thinness of it and the top edge and everything. I'll wrap it again, changing the plastic every few days so that a little bit of moisture escapes. And I might leave it for two, three weeks like that before I'll take it out and let it dry. And I might wrap it in newspaper depending on how dry or wet it is. Just to complete, when it's completely dry, when it's green, I'll sand it with wire wool and I save all the sanding as well and I reuse that so I get little bits of rust. Once it's bisque fired, I'll sand it again with diamond paper, you know, wet and dry paper. I then pick out certain areas with various resists, either glue or wax resist, 
to emphasize the pattern or complement it or whatever. I then paint the pot with a crank slip, wrap it in foil and smoke fire it fast in a dustbin with, um, with newspaper, crumpled up newspaper. So it fires for about half an hour. I then take it out, usually when it's still quite warm, and put it into hot water to wash the, the crank slip off. When it's completely dry, I'll warm the pot up and wax it with furniture polish. I'm very interested in the change between when something starts off completely perfect and symmetrical, and as various chaotic forces hit it, like on a seashell, the growth, or on a tree, a bit of bad weather, and suddenly the pattern changes and loses its symmetry and goes off into asymmetry. I'm fascinated by that. Mm -hmm.